Okay, so welcome back to uh, Finite Mathematics. And so today we're going to start 19.2, uh, and this is regular Markov chains. And so we're going to use a lot of examples here, to, uh, or a few examples. Um, so we're going to start by looking at uh, this example here. So let me uh, pull it up here. Okay, so what if, so here's, here's the thing. So in the example that we did last time with the dry cleaners, okay, so, so if we start with the transition matrix P and an initial probability vector like we did before, initial probability vector with the proportions, um, we can use the nth power of P to find the probability vector uh, of the n repetitions of an experiment. In this section, what we're going to try to decide, we're, we try to decide what happens to an initial probability vector in the long run. So if we're able to do this, so over a long period of time, so as n gets larger and larger and larger, okay? So again, we're going to assume that the transition probabilities remain constant from repetition to repetition, okay? So, for example, in this case, our transition matrix is uh, the one we had started with. So let's just write that up here just so we can see that. So our transition matrix uh, was 0.8, okay, 0.2, and then 0.35. And 0.65. Okay, so this is our P matrix. Okay, so now, now if we use the, uh, at the beginning, so an initial probability vector, which gives the marketing, sh the market share for each firm at the beginning of the experiment. So we're going to use 0.4 and 0.6, okay? So here's the state zero, right? The first one, at the beginning part, this is the initial vector proportions or probabilities, right? And so what we're going to do is if we look at these and we multiply the vector by P1, then this gives us the proportion of the next generation, uh, the next repetition, and the next repetition, and the next repetition, over and over and over again. Now notice something. What's happening to these values as it goes on and on and on? Well, it starts to get closer and closer to a particular value, doesn't it? Okay, so this is going up, right? And this one's going down, but they both seem to be heading towards a particular value, right? Okay, well, let's see what happens here. Okay, so it looks like the, the numbers seem to approach 0 0.64 and 0 0.36, right? Because the last three, as we move on, right tend to keep going right so here's the after af, the weeks after so here's the market share okay now what if it happens if we have the initial vectors suppose that the initial vector is 0.75 to 0.25 is used well look at this now it's going down to 0.64, and this is going up to 0.36. So what does this mean? It says the results, again, seem to be approaching the probability vector 0.64 to 0.36, okay, as before in the last example. Okay, so what does this mean? It says that in either case, the long-range trend is for the market share of about 64% for Johnson and 36% for North Clean. Okay, 
Now the example suggests that this long range trend does not depend on the initial distributions of the market shares, right? As we've seen, we use two different market shares to begin with, and they both tend to go towards the same um, results. Okay, so this means that if the initial market share for Johnson was less than 64, the advertising campaign has paid off in terms of a greater long range market share. If the initial share was more than 64, then the campaign did not uh, pay off. Okay, so this brings up an in interesting thing about these processes. Okay, so, so one of the many applications of Markov chains is in finding these long range predictions, these long range proportions or percentages, right? These predictions. It is not possible to make long range predictions with all transition matrices. But for a large set of transition matrices, long range predictions are possible. Such predictions are always possible with what we call regular transition matrices, which is what we're going to talk about in this section. A transition matrix is regular if some power of the matrix contains all positive entries. Okay, a Markov chain is a regular Markov chain if its transition matrix is regular. Okay, so let me repeat that again. So if we have a Markov chain that's a regular Markov chain, then its transition matrix, the P matrix, is a regular transition matrix. Okay, what does that mean? It's a transition matrix if some power of the matrix contains all positive entries. Okay? That's all it is. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, so now we want to decide whether the following transition matrix is regular. Well, here's what we got. Okay, that's our transition matrix. It's a square matrix, right? So there, we've got that going. Okay, so it has to be a square matrix, right? So it's a square matrix. And we take the second power, right? And since all of the entries are positive, C is regular. That's it. That's all we have to do. So now decide whether the following transition matrix is regular. Okay. So it's a square matrix, right? And so now we want to find the various powers of B and see what we get. Okay. B2, B3. Okay. Well, so far, we still have some uh, zeros in here, right? B to the fourth. Hmm. So it says further powers of B will still have the same zero entries. Interesting. So look at the zero entries. All the zero entries are the same. For this reason, B is not regular. Okay. So now, let's talk about the equilibrium vector of a Markov chain. Okay. So, so suppose, so now here's the thing. If a transition matrix P has some zero entries, and P2 does, does as well, you may wonder how far you must compute P to the N to be certain that the matrix is not regular. Okay, the answer is that if all zeros occur in the identical places for both PN and 
n uh, p n plus one for any n they will appear in those places for all higher powers of p so that means that p is not regular okay so that means if you find p uh, a power of p and it has certain zero vector or zero entries and then you take the next power of p and those same entries are still zero so nothing's changed in other words then it's then you can say it's it's uh not regular okay now suppose that v is the probability vector it can be shown that for a regular markov chain with a transition matrix P, there exists a single vector V that does not depend on the um, that does not depend on the um, lowercase V. Okay, such that the lowercase V times P to the N gets closer and closer to V as N gets larger and larger. So what does this mean? So let's let's look at this. Okay, so this is the equilibrium vector of a Markov chain. If a Markov chain with a transition matrix P is regular, okay, then there is a unique vector V such that for any probability vector lowercase v and for large values of N, that this is going to be approximately equal to v. So vector v is called the equilibrium vector or the fixed vector of the Markov chain. Okay. Now, in the example, well, let's go back. So in the example with Johnson cleaners, the equilibrium vector v is going to be approximately 0.64 and 0.65. Those entries, right? So so that's going to be the equilibrium vector because that's the vector that it seems to be approaching. Vector V can be determined by finding P to the nth power for larger and larger values of N and then looking for a vector that the product V times P of N, this one, right? So then we find a vector times P of N. Um, Oh, let's see here. And uh, then looking for a vector that the product of those two vectors approaches. Okay. So again, that's going to be the way we did it last time, right? So that's how we did that problem, right? We saw that, hey, what is these? What are the? What is the vector approaching with all these as n gets larger? And so that turned out to be our equilibrium vector. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. To find a vector that way, but can be uh, tedious. Okay, so we're going to use uh, a different method. Okay, because that you can make errors doing it the way we did, because you can always make mistakes multiplying and things like that, or even calculate errors. So we're going to find a better way to start with. So we're going to start with the fact that for a large value of n, we know this to be true. Okay. So if it is a regular Markov chain, and we know that this is going to be true for large values of n, okay, that's just a fact. So what we're going to do is, from this result, we're going to say, hey, um, if we multiply both sides by p on the right, okay, so if we do this and we say, okay, let's do v. times p to the n times p is approximately equal to v times p okay so that what do we get we get this is what equal to what? Oops. V
that's going to equal to that. Okay, so now, now since we already know this is to be true, right? So we know v times p of n for large values of n is it going to be approximately v. So that means that then v times p to the n plus 1 should also be approximately equal to v, which means that v times p is equal to what? This is equal to what? This is approximately v. So v is approximately equal to vp. And that's what this result gives us. So if a Markov chain with the transition matrix P is regular, then there exists a probability vector V such that this must be true. Where if we take the vector and we multiply it by P, we get the vector back. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so if we look at the dry cleaners example, okay, so we want to find the long range trend for the Markov chain in the dry cleaning example with the transition matrix. Okay, so we got the transition matrix here. Again, just to write it out, 0.8. Point 0.2. Point three Okay, so there's our P matrix. Okay, and so what we're going to do is uh, we want to find this. Oh, so for example, we know this is a regular matrix since all the entries are positive. Okay, and we've seen that before in the previous example. And so we let P represent the transition matrix and let V be the probability vector of V1, V2. So we're going to let V. equal the vector v1 v2 okay so we've got the probability vector v1 v2 and so we're going to use this fact up here we're going to use this to help set this up so we want to find we want to solve the equation where v1 or where v times p equals v okay so we're going to set up the equation where we want vp so we want so we want to take V2 
paint equals the same thing. So we have V1, V2. Okay, and so we're going to stick, obviously this is our P matrix that's going to go here. And so what we end up doing is if we do matrix multiplication, we end up with another matrix where we get to solve where when those are equal. Okay, so we get a system of equations. Okay, so what we end up with is when we solve these, we'll end up with a matrix that has a system of equations. Right, so we'll get 0.8 V1 plus 0.35 right that's going to be the first entry right so we get 0.8 so we get v times 0.8 and then v1 times 0.8 and then v2 times 0.35 and then the second entry is going to be what it's going to be v1 times 0.2 plus uh, v2 times 0.65 and so we get our system of two equations with two unknowns equal to um, v1 and v2 okay so we get a system of two equations and so what happens well in this case here we want what we want to set the two equations equal right so we get the two vectors equal to each other and then we set the corresponding entries from the two mat matrices uh, equal to get our two equations with two unknowns equal to v1 and v2 okay but then what we do is we move everything and we set both of them equal to zero okay so when we have this right so we're going to get an equation so here we're going to get 0.8 v1 plus 0.35 v2 is equal to v1 right so then we're going to move the v1 over and this is going to become what It's going to become negative 0.2 times v1 plus 0.35 times v2 is equal to zero. Okay, and so that's how we're going to solve these. And so we end up with these two equations, right? Uh, this one here. Okay, and the other one. We get point. Uh, point two, point two, so let's write this out so we get point two B one plus point. Six five V two is equal to V one V two. So we get this equation is equal to this this piece is equal to this and that's where our two equations come from and then we're going to move the two equations to the other side okay now one additional piece of information that we need to add is that the sum of the simple probabilities must be one okay 
we must have that V1 plus V2 must equal, well, remember, those are the proportions, right? So those must be, those must add up to 1, okay? So we must include that. So combining this equation with the equation uh, negative 0.2 times V1 plus 0.35 times V2 equals 0 will provide us with the following uh, graph. Okay, now for if we do that, then we get this idea. So now, combining this equation with the other equation will provide the long-range trend for the dry cleaning. Okay, so notice that in this figure here, we have what? Hold on a second, let me change. Okay, so notice that in this figure that the lines corresponding to the equations uh, 0.2 times V1 plus 0.35 V2 equals 0. So this one right here, the blue line, and the red line cross at a point. Now to find the value of this point, of course, we have to solve the system. Okay, so we have to solve the system of equations here where the two intersect. Okay. And so now, if we had a larger system, which is possible, then we would have to use the, Ga the Gauss-Jordan method of solving these. Okay, so again, those, those may come back. Uh, so make sure you know how to do those. Okay. But in this case here, since we only have two, uh, two unknowns, then we can just do it easily and solve for these. And so solving for these two equations, we get V2 is going to equal 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.36, 0 0.3636. Okay, so V1 will end up being 0 0.3636. And V2, or excuse me, that was V2, I'm sorry, I'm getting them. V2 equals 0.36, hold on. Okay, so this is going to be. V2, and this is V1, and V1 is point, uh, six, uh, what is it? Uh, 6364. Okay, and so that's what we get for the two equations with uh, two unknowns. Okay, so now that means that the equilibrium vector V is what? Well, This is going to be what we end up with. Again, we're going to deal with fractions, but this is going to end up being what? 4 elevenths? Right? That's where the 3636 three, came from. And this one was actually equal to uh, what? 7 elevenths. Okay, and let's see, is that all I want to say about that one? Okay, so I guess the other thing here is on the calculator. Um, when it comes to the larger ones, you're, you're definitely going to want to do your, use your calculator, okay? 
So if we wanted to find p to the 10th or p to the 20th, um, you would definitely want to sh use your T84 um, to do this, or T83 will do it as well, to find the transition matrix P from the dry cleaning example. The, this is what's uh, listed here uh, on the calculator. So again, use your rounding function to round to four decimal places. So you want to round the answer, uh, in this case, to four decimal places here. So if you're rounding this matrix here, so if you want the transition matrix going out to 10 replications or 10 generations, if you will, or 10 steps, uh, another way to say it, or to, if you want to do 20 steps, uh, look at what happens here. So as n gets larger and larger, you can see that going out to four decimal places, it, sh it go is going out to the transition matrix. So you see that this is going to 63, 64, 36, 36. Okay, and you can see that these are starting to settle down where the rows um, are going looking the same. So here are the properties of a regular Markov chain. Okay, suppose that a Markov chain, a regular Markov chain, has a transition matrix P. One, as n gets larger and larger, the product of V times V to the n approaches a unique vector V for any initial probability vector v. Okay? The vector capital V is called the equilibrium vector or the fixed vector. Two, vector v has the property that v times the transition metric matrix will give back v. Okay? Three, to find v, we solve a system of equations obtained from the matrix equation v times p equals v. Okay, and then from the fact that the sum of the entries of the of the vector v is one. Four, the powers p n come closer and closer to a matrix whose rows are made up of the entries of the equilibrium vector. Okay, those are the properties of a regular Markov chain. Okay. And so that ends this section. So again, make sure you practice the exercises in the textbook. Okay, so there is a textbook, uh, the online on Blackboard, uh, which is an online source. It's an open educational resource. So um, it's in there that you're going to look at the uh, chapter 17 on there. Um, chapter 17, 18. Chapter 17 is Markov chains, and then uh, 17 or 18 is the homework or uh, exercises. So go through those. Make sure you know how to do them. Uh, we're going to do plenty of these in class as well. So make sure you practice these. And if you have any questions, come to class with them. Uh, if you run into a problem where you're not sure uh, how to do one of these, or you're not sure what what's uh, what's going on, or you need a better explanation, just let me know. And we'll go through some more examples and uh, see if we can help you over the hump. Okay. And next time we're going to talk about absorbing Markov chains, which are quite different. And uh, until then, you have a great day. Bye-bye.